Okay, to continue uh, the second part here, it says uh, pressures affecting organization design. Now, depending on what work process and what is environment and strategy direction, these two forces, they can change your company. And that is going to, you know, and you need to make the optimum organization design. For example, if you're a bank and there's a lot of hackers, maybe you want to have big IT departments, right? If, uh, because there is an environmental, uh, you know, pressure. What happens if you're a bank and uh, you decided that you want to be 100% electronic? Do you see? So your direction is to be very electronic. Then maybe you want to have an electronic services department, right? On the other hand, if uh, your work process, there is a lot of processing that happens bank to bank, electronic transactions. Then maybe you want to have an electronic processing department. Do you guys see that? So basically what, uh, what this is trying to say is, depending on what pressure happens in your company, you start to design your company accordingly. The easy example, remember in your home, if you want, if your strategy to do a lot of cooking, you have a big kitchen, right? If uh, there's a lot of guests come to you every day and they eat a lot, then maybe that's another pressure to increase your kitchen. Do you see? Now, let's see, if we uh, look at this uh, Woodward classifications based on systems of production, with this graph try to show you that there are uh, group one, group two, group three. Group one is a small batch in unit production. So here, if we are producing, let's say, uh, we produce uh, one cake at a time. Uh, batch two, we have large batch in mass production. That's when we, uh, let's say, make, uh, you know, maybe 20 cakes uh, for one big event. Continuous process production, that's when we continue, when we produce a lot of cakes for so many people. Do you see? Are you guys okay with this? Now, if I'm going to make a, this is a small batch, this is large batch, and this is continuous process production. Do you guys know what we mean by a small batch? It means you produce few number of units. Group two, which is large batch, you produce a lot. Number three, you produce continuous, so you don't stop. Are you guys okay with this? Yes. This is maybe in your home, you bake a cake. That's a small batch. Maybe you make two. Maybe if you have like a big party that you're going to host, and you need to produce maybe 100. That's going to be a large batch, right? And it's almost, almost a mass production. Because you want 100 cakes, you want them all to look the same, right? And then there is a continuous process production. That's when you continuously produce cakes. Like you, you every one hour you make way cake and that's your business. Do you guys know businesses like that? Like a mocha coffee, uh, they, where they do that? Are you guys okay with this? Now let's look at these, uh, you know, how they are described here. If you are a small batch, uh, the production of a single piece to a customer order. So maybe you have one customer order, they produce one for them. Do you know a restaurant that do that? You go, you order a pizza, they make a pizza for you. That's a small batch. Number two, production of technical complex units one by one. So that's when you produce uh, uh, one for each as per customer request. Number three, fabrication of large equipment in stages. So here you need to have maybe, uh, yeah, that's maybe the step where you move to the next uh, group, where you start to have some equipment that's going to help you for the production of more, right? Number uh, four here, it says production of pieces in small batches. So maybe you want to produce, let's say, two at a time. So a customer come order two, you produce two. Customer come and order uh, ten, you make five and five. Because that's the maximum your equipment can handle. Number, uh, number five, it says production of components in large batches. 
subsequently assembled diversely. So here you produce them in more larger batches. So maybe you produce 10, 10, 10, 10. Do you see? So here we're moving to a large batch. And, uh, and here maybe you can assemble them uh, more like an assembly. You make, uh, let's say you make 10 pizzas, you make 10 uh, the dough. And then uh, you make the sauce, 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 cheese, 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 cheese. You put them to the oven. Do you see? So more like an assembly line. Number six is a production of large batches, assembly line type. So here we start to move to large batch. Do you guys know what's a large batch? It's more like you put the pizza. Uh, have you seen the trays? Sometimes you put the pizza here, the dough, and then it moves. And I make another one and it moves. And I make a third one and it moves. Then someone next to me will put the sauce. And then the pizza will move and put the sauce and pizza will move, you see. You start to move on into more like a production line. So you do more like mass production, do you see. Uh, anyone have been to the bakery? Did you see the bakery? They come with that big plate with all of the dough. And then they put them all into the oven yes. and they start to push uh, that's more like a production line mm -hmm. continuous process production combined with the preparation of the product for sale by large batch or small production method number nine says continuous process production of chemicals in batches so that's when you start to move into uh, it's no longer just a easy process it's more like chemical and uh, so it's more organic and continuous flow production of liquids, gases, solid shapes. So this becomes a very highly uh, sophisticated type of production. Are you guys okay with this? Any questions on this? The first five? Now the first five, basically if you look at them from the top, you produce one at a time. At the end, it's more like continuous production that's more complicated. And uh, that's the technical complexity continuum. So here, very low, uh, technically complex, very high, technically complex. Number one here, you produce one piece for one customer. Now here, production of technically complex units, one by one. So you produce also one unit, but it's very complex. Let's say, for example, is the pizza complex or uh, easy? Easy. 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 What's complex dish? Cheesecake. Cheesecake is complicated, do you see? So a cheesecake will be here, it's one, if a customer order a cheesecake, you know, it will be right here. It's not very simple, it's a little more complex. As order one, they get one, okay? And here you start to have, uh, what's a, let's see, uh, remember, uh, what is the most difficult equipment uh, required uh, uh, food. What food is not easy to make? More complicated than the pizza and the cheesecake and requires some big equipment. No, Mendy. Mendy, let's say. You see, Mendy, you need to have some special equipment to make it. So one customer make an order. Now, you're going to make one, Mendy, but you need not just the, it's not simple, it's complex, and it requires large equipment. And maybe it's stages, right? Number four, production of pieces in small batches. So that's when you start to make a lot of pieces. So it is simple, but it has many. Do you see? And then it goes on to number five, which is production of in large batches, assembly, more diversity. So you need to each one of them, you take care of it separately. Do you see? So basically these are different stages, how uh, production process uh, is going to be more uh, complex, uh, more uh, equipment heavy and more quantity. You see? Any questions on this?